Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is a custom ACL workshop on RecNo. And RecNo, this question comes in from one of my subscribers, so hopefully this is helpful not only to him but to other individuals as well. So RecNo is a very popular and common function and it's really useful and can really take your scripts to the next level and your analysis to the next level. So let's get into it. So RecNo is, has a syntax like this and you don't need to put any other parameters and what it's going to do is it's going to basically take the data as it's sorted right now and return the record number. So for example here if I were to go rec let's say 5 I would assume that's going to be this wastewater or I expect it to be this solid wastewater $51.17 $51 uh, which it is but it is contextual based off how the data is currently sorted. So if I sort this and were to go rec no 5 you'll see it gives me a different record number. So it is really useful, really helpful, really handy. You can also do a number of different things. So for example here, you can go to in between. So you know you can go between rec no and treat it as, uh, as a record number. Imagine that there's a record number. Basically imagine these these ones are calling upon the rec no, which is actually pretty similar. Um, and for example, if I were to go five to 10, it would give me everything between records five to 10, maintaining this, this records on the left-hand side. So that's, that's useful. You can also, uh, for example, define a record number yourself. This, this is very useful if, for example, you don't have an index key already in your data set. So you don't have something that uniquely identifies every single row. And you may have something, it may be a combination of different fields, but it may be harder to make sense or to grasp or to understand or to ensure that it's always going to work in the future. So one way of doing it to ensure that it always works for you in the future is here you can go to find field. You can call it your field wherever you want. I just call it a record number. And all you have to go is do is rec no bracket bracket. And then it'll ask you to create it. In this case, I've created it previously, uh, but still work. And then you'll see it here. And then this, this one is still relative to how it's sorted. But if, for example, so for example, if I were to sort it this way, you'll see that these record numbers will always match what's sorted because it's always going to match to the left-hand column. So one way of maintaining the original index, uh, how the data is indexed for different analysis is, for example, is to extract it to another table. That way it's now static. It's not referencing a particular formula. So here I'm going to go to temp, uh, open. Just give that a second to run. And it's really useful to, to use. And it's a really good way of, of maintaining the index. Open it up. Now I'm going to include this field again. So for example, if I sort by this batch transaction number, you'll see this record number then matches to the original key, uh, to the original order of the data, or whenever you apply the RecNo. One way of, of how I use it is, for example, when I use duplicate analysis. So here I'm going to just go duplicates. And I'm just going to pick a couple fields. Original amount, um, transaction date. I'm just going to do it that way. And I'm going to call this uh, duplicates. And now I have all, actually I should have included the, let me do that again. I'm going to include the rec no. So here I'm going to include the record number. I do my duplicate analysis. And now what I can do is now I can join this back with the data. So here I can create a new field called define, fi define field test 01 computed. And I can just say call this yes. So now, if I were to join it with this data, I'm going to open up a quick script to do this. I'm going to go set safety off, set exact on, close, close secondary. And I were to then open this temp file, 
and then open up the duplicates table that I just created uh, and put that as secondary and then do the join key and I'll do primary P key record number fields all S key record number with all to let's just call it temp zero two not very great names but uh, you understand the purpose so if I were to run this maybe we, maybe we just want test zero one and if I were to run that now I have a list of all the duplicates back with the original data set and this seems like a pretty simple example, which it is. But when you get more complicated joins and you do more complicated analysis, it's sometimes really hard to then link the data back to the original source. So it's a really great way of creating this primary key in your data if it doesn't already exist and help you link back to the original data set so you can pull together all these different risk analysis and all these different tests and procedures that you performed on your data, bring that all back so you can see whether or not there's any trends and patterns across different procedures. So one example is you may run a duplicate check, but you may also one, for example, is this vendor even legitimate or, or real or has this employee, did this employee have expenses in the prior period? So you may put those expenses at a higher, a higher up on your pile so that you can go and investigate those rather than treating them as silos and as individual tests. So hopefully you found that helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you next time.